Hello, my name is Duncan and this is Ruby and welcome to Back Away From The Donkey. Little Gizmo's in his bed over there. I'll give you a little bit of film and I'll put it up there and show you what he's doing. This little Ruby, if you saw my last video, is a visiting person who may be staying. And she's very fluffy, very cute and very lovely. Well, I need to put you down. This is all about to read what you own today, anyway. So, yeah, I noticed a few people videos are like their top 10 picks for the Read What You Own Challenge. Well, mine's not really top 10. I've just been through my shelves. Uh, this is probably going to take me a little bit. I'm probably going to have to split this video. Well, at least go off and grab some more books. And it's the books I've picked off that it's possibilities. It's like a cornucopia of possibilities. And what we are doing is... I'm just showing you some of the books I've got by just randomly going through my shelves. And I said, everybody's doing the Read What You Own Challenge in a different way. I've set mine at 25 books because I'm a slow reader. But my main aim is just to read books I've had for a long time that I've um, just not avoided. That I've got for a reason and I would really enjoy. So it's going. that's my hope is it's going to like focus on what I've got and what I've not read rather than just keep getting more and more sort of thing. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm just going to put a little ruby down. Okay, let's pop it down. Oh, yeah. And we will start. I said, I've got... I said, I'm only doing 25 books. And if you want to know my rules, my vague rules are... It's physical books only I'm counting. So e-books and that don't count. But I don't buy that many e-books. Uh, Rereads don't count. It's got to be me reading a book I've not read before. Uh, also, if there's a collection of books, say... I've seen people uh, do it like if there's an anthology collection of books that they count each book separately. Well, I'm not going to do that because otherwise I could just pick a copy of the Bible, which is, um, what was it, 27 books, the uh, um, New Testament. And count that as my whole of my challenge done. Or Lord of the Rings, depending on which version you read, is either three separate books or if you do one bound. So if it's bound in a book, it counts for me. And that's what I'm counting as. Uh, I don't care about the length of it. I'm not... The whole point of this is I don't want to get through it as quick as possible. Um, I can read lots of short books, get through it really quickly, but that seems to sort of defeat the object, which is some new discoveries of stuff that I've already got. As I said, it's a cornucopia of delights. And I've picked off probably more books than the challenge is. And this is just possibilities. I'm not saying I'm going to read them all in this challenge. This is just me randomly going around my bookshelves and I'm just grabbing a load of books that I've not read that could be in this. So I'm going to start with a collection of books. This is the, sorry, it's got some dust on it. The Black Wings of the Cthulhu. This is a collection of stories by various modern writers uh, in the style of sort of Lovecraft, Cthulhu stuff. Apparently there's quite a few volumes of this. My friend sent me this. I think that'd be interesting. In it. And I've, so I've had it for a few years. The Probably the only writer, because I'm not really into sort of horror sphere and what have you, that I know is Brian Stapleford, who's in there he's done one and there's a couple of sort of additions to Pickman's model if you know your love craft so this one is a high chance of getting on my list and that's the Black Wings of Cthulhu who's edited by 21 Tales of Lovecraftian Horror edited by S.T. Joshi which is a name that rings a bell but I cannot remember it of me another book that I am probably going to read it's probably a good chance is if you don't know I live in Orkney and we're a group of islands off the top of North of Scotland. Go to John and Groats, keep going for a little bit. Our most northerly island is called North Ronesy, and I think 60 people live there now. And this is a book I brought many, many years ago, written by somebody who lived there, and it was written in 1974. And I keep meaning to read it, published locally. Um, and I keep meaning to read it. So this is a chance to read it. There's a map of the island for you, if you can see that. Well, I've had this book for quite a few years, so I need to get around and actually read it. And next book I picked off the shelf is Evening News by Arthur Haley. Uh, I've read a couple of Arthur Haley books. I've read Hotel and I've read at Airport. I read these last year. Um, Michael Romeo is a big fan of Arthur Haley, one of the sort of 20th century great writers. 
and this is the evening news and as a ex-printer that i used to be this has got me quite intrigued and i was going to read it last year in uh said so michael romeo's had a month of people reading off the Haley stuff but i wasn't reading very quickly then so i never got around to this one so it's good chance to get the inside to read what you own now this one this is what i was talking about this technically is three books published in one collection and it's by different authors but i'm counting it as one because it's bound as one book uh that's if i read it don't know where i'm gonna get around to it i picked this up at a charity shop last week and it is called the uh what are they called they had a name on them anyway this collection of um sorry i'm, I'm rambling now these books oop there's a receipt in it there i don't know what they were called but it's a collection of books there's a few of them out there i think and it's by three authors robert l fish uh dandy death borrow of the night by elizabeth peters and the notch of the knife by william haggard don't know anything about this but it could end up on my list so i've got a bit rambly there so next book uh, possibility i said i was just going around my shelves and just grabbing books and I could have picked off so many more. And it's scary when you pick up all these books and you realise, I own these and I've not actually read them. James Morrow, The Mind of Violence, which I think was his first book. That one. And another one, a book I brought for my Philip K. Dick, books about Philip K. Dick that aren't written by Philip K. Dick, was by Michael Bishop. Philip K. Dick is dead, alas which Philip K. Dick is actually a character in this book. And so it's a possibility to read. I don't know about you, but I've got authors that you think, I really should like this author. And you try, and you just never do. This is one of these. Off C. Clark. I've read oof, one of you, Rama. I haven't read The Space Sentinel, which is a short story 2001 based on uh, uh, A Fall of Moon Dust, uh, a couple of others. I've never really, technically they read okay, but they don't sort of grab me. But I've got Imperial Earth here by Arthur C. Clarke. And so that is another possibility. And the next one I found was this book I found here in perfect condition in a charity shop, actually. John Crowley, Engine Summer. It's a book I've heard about, never read it. And the final three of this section, so if I'm looking over there, there's another pile of books, is, I've got three books here. In the back end of the 80s, early, I think early 90s, TSR, uh, who owned and developed Dungeons and Dragons originally, and uh, somehow got the rights to Buck Rogers. So they published a load of books. And I've got three of them here. Uh, I've got Arrival which is just short stories. It includes people like Jerry, sorry, um, Robert Sheckley, um, M.S. Murdoch in their short stories, Arrival. I like Buck Rogers as a character. I think he's overlooked sometimes. And John Miller's first power play. And M.S. Murdoch's Hammer of Mars. And I'm not sure whether they follow on from each other or not. I might have to do some research those. But yeah, I've had those for a while. Never read them. So yeah, I'm just about to do a swap over some books. So I will see you in a couple of moments. Uh, let's see if we can. So yeah, let's see if we can do some weird transition. <sighs> Back again, another pile of books. So it's probably more than I had last time. I said, as I said, these are all possibilities for read what you own. So I said I'm quite interested in watching other people's videos and people have got, I'm going to read this, this and this. And if you know me, I struggle with TBRs and this month is probably the first time ever I've done a TBR of books I'm going to read. And it's been quite interesting. So, but I could never do a TBR for six months. That just wouldn't work for me at all. So, first book I've got here is Jack Williamson, Brother to Demons, Brother to Gods. And the reason I have this, as much as Jack Williamson is a good writer, is because of the Jim Burns cover. And Jim Burns is one of my favourite um, science fiction artists. 
and it's a gorgeous cover that he's got there and that's probably the reason I have that one but I need to read the book so next we have a Wilson Tucker so if you've been seen my videos you know I'm on a bit of a Wilson Tucker kick at the moment and this is Ice and Iron so yeah so go and have a look at my review of the Year of the Quiet Sun and if not go and read it the Year of the Quiet Sun because everybody should Next I come across is some Bob Shaw. I'm going to link to a video up here, which is, I had a box of books my friend sent me, and it discovered that this box of books was actually my box of books. It's all a weird story, because they were left at the company I used to work with, and they'd been hanging around for 30 odd years. And in that box of books was a copy of Bob Shaw's Who Goes Here, which is a play on, obviously, the Who Goes There title. And I've never read that, so that was in my infamous box of books. I've got a couple, of, and I've got another Bob Shaw here, which is the Ragged Astronauts. I've got the, all of this trilogy, and I need to read this. Hot air ballooning in between planets. I've got to read it. Haven't I? I also have a bit of a thing for film uh, adaptations, um, novelizations, and a film that. I know is Meteor, which had Sean Connery, which wasn't the best of films, big disaster film, and I've managed to get hold of this novelization of it, which I've not read, which I'd quite like to read. I'm just having a quick look at the back of this. Sean Connery, Natalie Wood in it. So Natalie Wood died in what was it? Her last film was Brainstorm, the Douglas Trumbull film, which is about eighty one, so this must be pre then. Um yeah, this is probably 79. Yeah, so this film must have been it's a disaster film, Meteor Hitting the Earth, Sean Connery, Natalie Wood. I can't remember who directed it. And Martin Landau's in this as well, I forgot about that. Somebody called Ronald Nean, who I do not know. The film's okay, it's not brilliant, but I'm interested in novelisation because I like novelisations. Next one is one that you may have seen me pick up a few months ago, which was The Tin Angel by Ron Goulart. And it's got a spaniel with a straw boater dancing in front of a skull. What more do you want? And it's actually quite a short book. Not that I'm going for short books in this challenge. I'm just going to read what I read. I said 25 books is my goal. I might do more, might do less. We'll see how we go. And next I've got some Bradbury. This was another box book from my box of books that my friend sent me that was my box of books. As I said, I'll put a link up there. And this is... A collection I, I sing the body electric in a beautiful corgi purple sci-fi collector's edition which i love and it's got stories in it or stories has it got in it i've not read this collection but i may have read some of the separate stories elsewhere um lost city of mars is it nothing rings a bell looking at that so a good chance i haven't and talking to mars some Ben Bova. Ben Bova Mars, which is technically publication wise, I think the first book of his Grand Tour series, which is a, predict a load of books that, but these can all be read separately. I've got about five or six of them, and I should get around to them. So let me just rearrange these books here because I don't want to end up with issues like Red Set, like Fred did the other day. Okay. Other possibilities. Last year, our local charity shop, somebody had offloaded the whole of their penguins, by the looks of it, and in there was Steinbeck. Four of them. So we had the Red Pony, which I've never heard of. Of Mice and Men. Grapes of Wrath. and East of Eden. And Steinbeck is one of the great American novelists and I've never read any of it. So I'd like to read at least one of these in this Read What Your Own Challenge. And one book now I'm gonna give you that I'm 100% gonna read in this challenge is James Michener's Space, uh, which is a fictionalization of the space race, basically. Uh, a fictional version of it. 
Uh, there is a mini series that I happen to have a copy of that I remember watching in the 1980s, which, uh, who did it start? Robert Mitchum, I think, was in it. I'd have to have a look. But yeah, James and Mitchum does huge amounts of research. Looking forward to that. It's a bit of a beast book. How many pages is it? Okay, weirdly, it has no page numbers. <laughs> so that's good reading a bit. Um, so, eh, won't be able to do anything on Goodreads for that. Oh well, but yes, Space, James Michener. Next, I've got, I think, a pile of possibilities. I think basically these are mainly um, collections of short stories, but I could be wrong. So, let's start with the first one. It's called Dinosaurs. And I picked this up in a job lot of book a few years ago, job lot of books off of eBay. And this is a selection of Short stories about dinosaurs. I may have read some of the individual stories, but I've not read this book. It's probably got Sound of Thunder. It's got The Sprout to Camp, some Bridal Wallace, uh, Harry Turtle and Dove, Hatching Season, which I know. Time's Arrow, which is an Arthur Clark story, which I don't know. Hasn't it got Sound of Thunder? Weirdly. But yeah, all books starting dinosaurs. I think that could be fun. <laughs> I like King Man. New writings in Sci Fi 27, Kenneth Former, uh, with the weird, weird cover. Which has got some. What authors have we got in this one? Jerry Johnson, Brian Aldis. Brian Aldis is more with you. Dave Langford, Graham Chanuk. Some lesser known ones. And then I've got this year's best sci-fi nine. I've got best sci-fi seven back there, but I've read that. Which is edited by edited by Brian Aldis and Harry Harrison. Some more collections. And these stories include Um Arjun Buttress, Lisa Tuttle, Barry Maltzberg, who I've got a book back there actually by him on that read. Um Richard Cowper. Um Michael Moorcock. Yeah. And then the final collection of well, science fiction stories I've got is, well, these are novellas. This is called Exiles, by ben, edited by Ben Bova. And there was three books in this collection. And I picked this one up because it's got the story uh, Actually, no, it's a different book. It's not the book I was thinking. <laughs> There's another one I've got. Anyway, ignore me. Ignore me. So now we go to some... Before we hit... We're on the final stretch, people. On the final stretch. My friend who sent me the Cthulhu collection also sent me After the King, which was stories in honour of Tolkien. And this was published in late 90s. Uh, da, 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 da. God, my eyesight's getting worse. My eyesight's definitely getting worse, people. 98. And a collection of stories, sort of, we don't know what I'm talking. They weren't specifically written for this, because there's a couple of stories in here I know. There's Reeves the Just, which is in uh, a Stephen Donaldson's collection. But it's a Terry Pratchett here. Um, what's uh, Patricia McPhillip. Some Harry Turtle Dove, Andre Norton. Uh, Charleston Lint. So yeah, nice selection of stories and that's a possibility on the many possibilities. And then finally, I've got a bunch of books here for possibilities. I, last year, earlier, last year, this year, early this year, I picked up Casino Royale second hand uh, and I'd never read any proper, any of the Ian Fleming James Bonds. I read some of the novelizations many years ago, but none of the Ian Fleming. So I read Casino Royal. Uh, I wasn't overly impressed by it. It was okay. But a few weeks after I read it, I went into a charity shop and we found this bunch of 70s great mass markets of James Bonds. Lots of women draped over guns of. So Live and Let Die. Let me just push those books out of the way. Uh, from Russia with Love. 
And I've had a close look at these pictures and I think there was actually a big gun there. I don't think it's been composited in. As an ex-printer, I know what to look for. Uh, Dr. No. Goldfinger. Imagine having the prop of that huge gun, though. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, the cheaper way for them to do it would have been to have the big gun rather than actually composite it in. Because I used to do some of that. I was a printer before I used to do some um, compositing and stuff. And Thunderball. And you only live twice. So I doubt I'd read them all in part of this challenge, but I may pick up one of them to see if it's any better than Casino Royal or so, which I wasn't overly impressed with. Um, but yeah, that's my sort of cornucopia of possibilities, as I say. Uh, loads of books I can possibly read. Uh, so we'll see. If you want to see how I'm going on this, I'm going to put a playlist together of all my sort of uh, read what you own challenge videos so you can have a look through those if you wanted to there's also a link below is a spreadsheet so it'll show you what i'm reading that at the time and what month and how many i've ticked off the read what you own it basically starts from uh the read what you own challenge but it includes the stuff that i will not be counting in read what you own but i've put little columns in there so you can see what it is and i've just done that because it's got the isbn's of the books so if you're interested in any of the books i'm showing it means you've got a reference there I doubt any, many people have looked at it, but it's all useful for me as a log of this. So yeah, so that's the bit for Read What You Own. If you... No, I've actually done two books that count for Read What You Own. I'm now reading a book that doesn't count for it. Um, so we will uh, be finishing that one soon. I've got some videos coming out this week. I've been struggling making videos just because of uh, busyness, stress, head exploding... That's sort of nonsense. Uh, but I'm looking for getting back to talking to people, invisible people on the internet, which would be quite nice. And I said, if you want to contact me or anything, um, all my details are below. And any comments are always greatly received. And I will speak to you very soon. And I'm just going to go and quickly film Gizmo in his bed so I can put that up at the beginning of the video. Uh, and I will say goodbye to you now.